Good day. I am Sedfri Martinez Candelaria, and I'm from the Ateneo Human Rights Center as one of the senior lawyers affiliated with the Katutubo desk of the center. Today, I would like to discuss matters concerning indigenous peoples. Who are indigenous peoples? What are their vulnerabilities? What legal protection do they have under the existing legal system? And finally, how do we make the law work for indigenous peoples today? Indigenous peoples in the Philippines are homogenous societies living in organized community on communally bounded territory under claims of ownership. Some may be nomadic in their way of living through the mountain ranges, but they all have a common set of bonds, language, customs, traditions, and other cultural traits. To date, there are more than a hundred ethno-linguistic groupings in this country. Why do we need a special protection for indigenous peoples? Let me share with you some of the vulnerabilities and issues that surrounded indigenous peoples, past and present. Colonization, for example, is one of the biggest sources of marginalization. It had an impact on the concept of their native title, their possession of ancestral lands, ancestral domains, no? at the point of conquest, through a legal fiction called Yura Regalia, or the Regalian Doctrine. Settlements of indigenous communities in this country at the point of conquest were actually covered by the concept of lands of the public domain. The other point is the existence of armed conflicts in some of the settlements of indigenous communities. On account of existing internal armed conflicts in this country, they have been, to a certain extent, suspected as sympathizers. Some occasionally may have been recruited into the movement out of force, and others also had been displaced, sometimes permanently, from their settlements. The other aspect of vulnerability may be caused by government projects that allowed mining concessions. And there have been documented cases around the country that led to the marginalization of communities because of long-standing projects of this nature. Displacement from ancestral domain and ancestral lands also led to their marginalization, discrimination, and minimal access to social and economic assistance. It has come to the attention of government and the rest of society that a law was needed to correct historical injustice, to address marginalization of indigenous peoples in this country. As far back as 1997, the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act was adopted and it contained the following salient points. First, it sought to affirm native title, which is a legal concept that actually recognizes time immemorial possession of indigenous peoples, of their ancestral domains and ancestral lands. Number two is the matter of self-governance. Indigenous communities now are allowed to exercise political and other forms of decision-making processes in accordance with their own concept of leadership and consensus building. The third is the capacity now of indigenous peoples to be able to develop, utilize, and exploit the natural resources within the ancestral domains, within the ancestral lands, and inland waters and airspace. 
This is a very important change in so far as controlling resources within their settlements are concerned. Indigenous peoples today are able to resolve disputes among themselves using customary laws and indigenous justice system. The only limitation of the method of resolving disputes at the community level is that the practices, the indigenous justice system must respect national laws, international human rights standards, and the Philippine Constitution. Maintaining cultural integrity is an important aspect of the life of indigenous peoples. They have to be able to continue practices that are relevant to their communities and even matters concerning indigenous knowledge systems must also be protected and promoted. There is a commission called the NCIP or the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples. Today, this agency of government is intended to allow the processing of certificates of ancestral domain, titles, and land titles. It also can review certain decisions of the indigenous communities in so far as processes are arrived at by their communities whenever necessary. The NCIP is there to assist to have the indigenous communities' decision-making process fully realized in accordance with the will and the consent of the communities. Finally, creating an enabling environment for indigenous people's exercise of rights may be done through the following. First, popular education for indigenous communities on their rights under the law. Second, advocacy on behalf of indigenous communities with frontline service government agencies such as the field of education, health, labor, environment, natural resource protection, social welfare, agriculture, and even the justice sector. Finally, we need to empower indigenous communities to develop their ancestral domains and ancestral lands through fair economic partnerships with responsible individuals, corporations, and other civil society groups. We hope that with this enabling environment, we will be able to further promote the rights of indigenous peoples in the future.